Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. Uh, he's a level three whiskey sommelier. He's a master of moot. And uh, Daniel's box has a bit of spice. Okay, so Deb dropped this off. Deb Nehemiah, level three whiskey sommelier. Wait, wait, wait. Drop this off for us. Oh yeah, that's right, you need to. Good lord, what is that? It's like he's. It's like, I'm, it's like I don't even care. Sorry, Deb. Chimp. Deb Nehemiah. Deb Nehemiah. What's that chimp? <laughs> yes, you are a chimp. And Deb ne Nehemiah is a magnificent bastard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so remember when I went to that class with Nancy? <laughs> no, is this, is this the new Daniel story? Yeah. So it's not lived in Hawaii, lived in Scotland. When I went to the class with Nancy. No, no, this is applicable. As soon as you hear the story, you'll realize what's applicable. One of my class attendees who I hung out with, Davin Patel, uh, <laughs> Topel, he's the new master distiller over there. Oh. Yeah. At uh, In Blanco. I am Blanco, Texas. You may recognize his name, Real Spirits, yeah. as Real Brewery, Real Ale. Yeah. Yes, one of the like top 20 craft brewers in the nation. Sure. Yeah, Real Ale is uh, Texas-based in Blanco, Texas. And if you read it, it's B-L-A-N-C-O. It's actually pronounced Blanco, not Blanco. Uh -huh. uh, Blanco, Texas. It smells good. And they decided... Really unique. ...to start uh, making whiskey. I think the guy who founded Real Ale had wanted to do it for a long time. But they're using the mash that they use for, brew for brews mm -hmm. in their whiskey distilling. Now, Have in theory, this? no, not yet. I haven't even smelled it yet. I go ahead. This is double pot stilled, mm -hmm. distilled twice, then with new American oak, then blended together. Uh, this is batch one commemorative. You can only get this in the distillery right now. Mm. You cannot get this in the store. Um, so thanks, Deb, for that. Uh, they take different beer styles. All right, I'm past the nose. Them. Now no, no. I'm tasting. They distill them. Age them separately and then blend them back together. It smells great. It does. Here's, dude. This is a Texas whiskey that makes me a little proud. Yeah. No, this because it's not just a bourbon alone. It's it's a so I don't, it's its own thing. This is a difficult one. Difficult one for me to describe because it's the kind of whiskey that lands square in the heart of what whiskey is. Mm -hmm. But the notes aren't um, generic and typical. I'm getting notes that are absolutely whiskey notes, but it's ones that you don't get every time you toss back a whiskey. What is on the nose, or to, to, so to start with, on the nose, there's some type of... No, oh, it's a lot of alcohol, and I'm getting a lot of the nail polish kind of... No, no, no. But it's not high proof, but it's there's like something a, behind there. Like 45. An, like an almond, like the dusted, crunched up almond crumbs. On the nose. A graham cracker crust. Like when you're making, yeah. when you're crumbling it up and putting it in the bottom of a cake of a pipe tin before you put in the Jello no bake cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> because, <laughs> because classy. Because what? <laughs> no, it is graham cracker. There's okay. a honey, which is, think you about it, it. Yeah. honey cookies. Yeah. That's it. Honey biscuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's even more prominent than the almond bit I'm getting. I'm getting, it's not, so you know that? Almond note we get at the end of Westland mm -hmm. and Deer Hammer. Yeah. Uh, that note, but on the nose. Not the taste necessarily. Yeah, almost almond roca. Yeah. Which has toffee yeah. and almond and chocolate all combined. Almond mm -hmm. rocas are great. This is like super good. That's my official tasting. Okay, I, you know what this I think? This is like. You know what I think I need? Super good. In order to make a fair judgment? A little more. A little more. A little more. For science. For science. <laughs> I just, you know, I don't want. I want to give him a fair shake. So, Chris Servia, hey guys, unrelated to this specific episode, I'm pretty sure this wasn't the proper way of asking for a cheers or a drink, but I lost one of my best friends, mm. and he loved whiskey. And if this gets to you, uh, guys, cheers of angels envy. Ah, as a tribute to my friend Brian would be a great blessing for him. I love you guys and miss my wonderful fellow musician very much. Was his last year at Berkeley. We would be honored to toast your friend. Cool. Especially with Angel's Envy. Good choice. Mm. All right. We didn't get a name. To my friend Brian. Brian? To yes. Brian. To Brian. Cheers. Cheers to you. 
So, um, hey guys, we're starting to get more of these requests. Uh, and this is what so this is what happens when you build a community of friends, the yeah. people that feel like they're all friends. Yeah. When it's, then they step up and, and they'll they, say, "Hey, this big thing happened in my life, and I feel like I want. I feel like more of the world should know about it. And I want to get the publicly honored. Yeah. I want to share. And and I'll say this, uh, Gordon Atkinson, mm -hmm. one of our sommeliers, he wrote this post one time called "The Whole World Should Stop." And it was about how when one of your friends dies or, you know, there's this big tragedy in your life. Right. You feel like the whole world should just stop functioning for a little bit because you are. Yeah. Right. You stop functioning and it doesn't feel fair that everyone else is just going on, not realizing that the whole world has stopped. Mm. Right. The whole world should stop. And so when you're alone and you're, but you found a community of friends, it's, it's, easy to reach out and say, you know what, maybe I can get these guys to all stop with me because I've stopped. Well, and speaking right? of, that's one of the things that has just organically happened in the Whiskey Tribe Facebook page, mm -hmm. which has been kind of amazing. People feel comfortable enough anytime a big moment happens in their life, good or bad, mm -hmm. like got a new baby, got a new pet, uh, or my friend passed away, a parent mm -hmm. passed away, um, the you know family pet passed away. People are sharing it to honor them uh, and get a round of uh, support and toasts from the community and people step up and it's kind of great So anybody that wants to share those kinds of moments That's absolutely what that Facebook page is for. Yeah, do that in the tribe uh, It's more likely to happen than if you post it to a YouTube comment because and I, I may miss it, right? So yeah. I didn't miss that one Yeah, but there's every chance that I'll miss your comment on YouTube and it will go unheard and that would be really sad Yeah, so uh, if you join the tribe or if you're in the tribe use the tribe for those kinds of things You're more likely to actually be seen mm. And uh, the Whiskey Tribe right now, there's a waiting list for the Facebook group at whiskeytribe.com. You can go to the Facebook tab and you can get on the waiting list. We're going to be increasing the size cap here in the not too distant future. The only thing I'm waiting for, if you agree, mm. is I want to have some onboarding videos in place. Yeah, yeah. So people, they have to watch just to understand uh, who we are, what we're all about, what the culture is like. So whenever they decide to step in, uh, they're not a duck out of water. They know what's up and how to behave to make sure that it's, uh, it's a good fit for everybody. I'm all for that. Yeah. All right, so I'm coming back to the real ale. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like it even more after the Angel's Envy. Really? Mm-hmm. Because it's got more complexity, and, and the Angel's Envy is beautiful right. and friendly. It's no, like a velvet glove. It does have more complexity. Right, but this... Here's what's funny. Everyone wants to claim we taste like the spirit of Texas, but to me, this tastes more like Texas than something in my brain than something sweet than many of my favorite whis my uh, well-known Texas whiskeys. This is it's Texas. You know the first rain in West Texas, right? It's been hot. It's summer, and then you get that first hint of rain, and there's this smell in the air—a oh, yeah. cedar. And chrysoid bushes wet, and wet soil. Yeah, wet soil, and I get that earth mm -hmm. in here. I get that spice. Um, it is honey sweet too, but not overly sugary. Not overly sugary. And in the Angel's Envy, I get you know, especially coming off of the heels of the uh, the real, mm -hmm. um, the cherry and a little bit of apple and cinnamon. I'm yeah. getting more cinnamon than I remember coming off of the heels of this. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah. Very I good. dig it, man. Very well good. done, guys. Jordan Desmond. I recently, re uh, I recently received a mini barrel to further age uh, and flavor whiskey. Is there a better way to go about this as far as how long to leave it in the barrel? Question mark. <laughs> Thank you. Exclamation point. Here's what I would say about aging your own. If you get the barrel, remember that your first run is going to be an experiment. So when you get a barrel to age stuff in, mm -hmm. it's not, this is not a cookie cutter process where you're just like, I got a barrel, so now I can put something and then good, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. No, yeah, your first one is, is an experiment. And so if you come to it as an experiment instead of as let's make something good, right. you'll actually enjoy it more mm -hmm. in my experience. So find a good raw spirit that you want to age, a good neutral or clear spirit, some right. kind of moonshine or something, and then pour it in there and then Pull a two to four ounce or six ounce sample if you've got a big enough barrel, like five liter. Right. If you got smaller, pull like two ounce samples uh, every week. Just pull a sample every week. 
and then uh, until it's empty. And at the end, you'll have this massive spectrum of what happens in that barrel when it's new with a clear spirit, right? Yeah. And now you know the next time you do it with a new barrel, where your favorite stopping point is. Oh, yeah. And now you can start to refine which spirits you use and so on, right? And now you have a used barrel, which means you can take things, other whiskeys, and age them further in a used barrel, and it'll be less tannin oaky and more friendly. There's, that's so fun. Fair enough. Welcome so, to the journey. We've done a full episode. We've done some comments. Yeah. Uh, we've had two wonderful whiskeys. Okay. Bring me another damn whiskey. Uh, you cannot resist bringing me another damn whiskey. Okay, I have a plan. I have a plan. I'm gonna keep this right here because Michael Garton. Hey, my girlfriend and uh, my girlfriend and I were watching you the other day, and she exclaimed, "I don't like the one on the left. He always cuts in like he knows more." <laughs> Wait a minute. So, left me. You. That's me. <laughs> yeah. That's me. <laughs> you notice I cut and pasted this. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, you do cut in like you know more, Daniel. I explained to her that Daniel actually is a sommelier <laughs> and does know a lot. And Rex is a pretty face to bring in more viewers. <laughs> yeah. She laughed and we continued watching. Yes. Yeah. So here's the thing. Would I rather be smart or beautiful? Luckily, both. You're going to go with both, aren't you? I don't have to choose. Yeah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> so here's the, th here's the thing. I've been watching a bunch of the episodes now just to catch up on some random stuff because yeah. I don't normally watch them, actually. Yeah, you interrupt a lot. Um, I really do, man. You're, you're bad. I really do interrupt a lot. Yeah. And you know what it is? So... It's enthusiasm. No, it's not. I just did it again. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, uh, so I have a lot of things going for me. Good looking, brilliant, uh, I smell good. <laughs> you smell good. I have hair. <laughs> <laughs> You're tall. But there is one thing Daniel has going for him. Uh, After a career of onstage performing, yeah, he can project his voice across the room. Yeah, I can. And after a career of sitting in dark rooms in front of screens, I don't have a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so if I just try to yeah. keep talking, it's immediately lost. No, no, no yeah. But uh, I'm okay with that. I'll let you be the loud one, and I'll just be all the other good things. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting all the time. What did you bring me? Because you could not resist the okay, power. Okay, so a couple- the powers! Of my mooch necklace. I you know. just did it again. A couple of friends of ours drove, drove all the way down here oh. Oh. from Canada. No. Oh. And they brought us this spice box, which they've been, we've been meaning the feature for a while. Samuel Preventer Tardiff and Nick Gravel, you magnificent bastards. <laughs> So, uh, at least I think they're from Quebec. I'm yeah, no, I, you were out. Um, I was out, Rex was here. I got to run down and meet them real quick. Uh, and uh, lovely guys. Glad they glad they got to stop by. Okay, so there was a certain Ooh. Canadian distiller during Prohibition that would ship wooden barrels marked as spices. This is frosting, man. Did you hear this? Spices. Spices full of whiskey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, so they went off of that. That's why it's called Spice Box, right? It is a three to six year old whiskey. And then they take vanilla and spice and cold infuse it mm -hmm. into the whiskey. So it is a flavored whiskey, which is, depressingly enough, super Canadian. <laughs> Even more so than the U.S. So, so like um, we give Canada a hard time calling them. But then you send stuff like this to us, and we give Canada a hard time. And why does that say? Does Canada spell it with the Y and not an E Y? Uh, it's depends. Okay, it depends on the whiskey. It's so freaking complicated, man. Oh yeah. What I wanted to know was it's was frosting. the density on this. It's frosting. It's the density on this is like a vanilla extract. Oh no, not on the glass. Open the bottle and smell it. This is... It's vanilla extract. I'll tell you what it is. It's a vanilla cupcake. This is the frosting on a carrot cake. Cream cheese frosting. Yes. On a carrot the cake. The only legitimate frosting. On a carrot cake. I'm going to start a new war. 
There's only and one it's a, frosting. It's a really heavily sugared yeah. carrot cake. There's only one frosting so, and it's cream cheese frosting. So, All other frosting sucks. Yeah, I don't care enough for that to actually be a word. No, this is actually a thing. I I worked at a bakery. All right, yeah, somebody. And cream be, cheese frosting is the only frosting. Somebody be the other end of this, because I don't care enough. Uh, and Dr Pepper. Easy. Smell that. Dr Pepper. Yeah. But like the syrupy Dr Pepper. Yeah, with the cream cheese frosting. So like this is the <laughs> definition. Of I haven't tasted it yet. Sugary candy sweetness. The. Definition of sugary candy sweetness. I'm already getting a sugar high just from the nose. Whoa! Yeah! That's drinking liquid frosting. Wow! Ah! Oh, there's not... You know... You know what? On the rocks, I would get drunk with this really fast. Flat cream soda. Yes! Okay, that's it. It's flat cream In soda. In the review, this is flat cream soda. Hey guys! I'm sorry if this makes you feel bad, <laughs> but you brought us flat cream soda in a bottle. It really. And if we put this on the rocks and added some carbonation, right. it would be a 35% alcohol cream soda. So the thing is, I kind of like cream soda. I love cream soda. Yeah. <laughs> I usually like some carbonation in there, but all right. Okay, I'm going back to real ale. Oh. That was a long video. Was it? Mm-hmm. Oh. Time flies whenever you're tall and smart with hair and you smell good. Or when your voice projects! Yeah. <laughs> that's, about, that's all I got going for me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> There's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. You fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.